Monetary Policy, an overview of the central bank's actions to regulate the money supply, interest rates, and credit availability for economic stability. Monetary policy refers to the measures and strategies employed by a country's central bank to manage and regulate crucial aspects of the economy, including the money supply, interest rates, and credit availability. The primary objective of monetary policy is to maintain stability and promote sustainable economic growth. The central bank, as the key authority responsible for formulating and implementing monetary policy, uses various tools and techniques to influence the overall financial conditions within a country. These tools include open market operations, reserve requirements, and the manipulation of key interest rates. Open market operations involve the buying and selling of government securities, such as treasury bonds, in the open market. By purchasing these securities, the central bank injects money into the economy, increasing the money supply. Conversely, when the central bank sells securities, it reduces the money supply, aiming to regulate inflationary pressures. Reserve requirements are regulations imposed by the central bank that determine the minimum amount of reserves commercial banks must hold. By adjusting these requirements, the central bank can influence the liquidity of the banking system. Lowering reserve requirements encourages banks to lend more, increasing the availability of credit, while raising them limits lending, reducing credit availability. Interest rates play a crucial role in monetary policy. Central banks have the power to set the benchmark interest rate, often referred to as the policy rate or the key policy rate. This rate serves as a guide for other interest rates in the economy, influencing borrowing costs for businesses and individuals. Adjusting the policy rate helps control inflation, manage economic growth, and stimulate or cool down the overall economy. By implementing monetary policy, the central bank aims to achieve various objectives. These objectives typically include maintaining price stability by controlling inflation, promoting full employment, supporting sustainable economic growth, and ensuring financial stability. It is important to note that the effectiveness of monetary policy can vary depending on the economic conditions, the level of cooperation between monetary and fiscal authorities, and other factors. Therefore, central banks continuously monitor economic indicators, financial market trends, and external factors to adjust their policy measures accordingly and maintain stability in the economy. Economic growth understanding the expansion of goods and services production and its measurement through gross domestic product, GDP. Economic growth refers to the sustained increase in the production of goods and services within an economy over a specific period. It is an essential indicator of a country's overall economic health and is commonly measured by changes in gross domestic product, GDP. The production of goods and services is a fundamental driver of economic growth. When there is an expansion in production, it signifies an increase in output, employment opportunities, and income generation. This growth can be observed across various sectors of the economy, including agriculture, manufacturing, services, and other industries. Gross domestic product, GDP, is a widely used metric to quantify economic growth. It represents the total value of all final goods and services produced within a country's borders during a given period, typically a year. GDP encompasses the value of consumer spending, investment, government expenditure, and net exports, exports minus imports. The calculation of GDP involves adding up the value of goods and services produced in different sectors. It captures both the tangible goods produced, such as cars or clothing, and the intangible services provided, such as healthcare or banking. By measuring GDP over time, economists can assess the rate and direction of economic growth. Economic growth is crucial for several reasons. It leads to higher standards of living by providing individuals with more income and access to goods and services. It creates employment opportunities, reduces poverty, and enhances overall social welfare. Additionally, economic growth generates tax revenues for governments, allowing them to invest in public infrastructure, healthcare, education, and other essential services. However, it's important to note that economic growth should be sustainable and inclusive. 
Sustainable growth takes into account environmental considerations, aiming to minimize negative impacts on natural resources and promote long-term viability. Inclusive growth focuses on ensuring that the benefits of growth are shared across all segments of society, reducing income inequality and promoting social cohesion. Governments, policymakers, and central banks play a vital role in fostering and supporting economic growth. They implement various measures such as fiscal policies, government spending and taxation, and monetary policies, interest rate adjustments and money supply control, to create an environment conducive to growth. These policies aim to stimulate investment, encourage entrepreneurship, foster innovation, and enhance productivity. Monitoring and analyzing economic indicators, including GDP growth rates, help policymakers assess the effectiveness of their strategies and make informed decisions to sustain and enhance economic growth. Economic development, enhancing long-term economic, social, and institutional conditions of a country. Economic development encompasses a comprehensive and multifaceted process aimed at improving the overall economic, social, and institutional conditions of a country over an extended period. It goes beyond mere economic growth and takes into account various aspects that contribute to the well-being and progress of a nation. The objective of economic development is to create sustainable and inclusive growth that benefits all segments of society. It involves implementing strategies and policies to address structural challenges, promote social welfare, and enhance the overall quality of life for citizens. Social dimensions of economic development encompass improvements in education, healthcare, housing, and other essential services. By investing in human capital, countries can equip their citizens with the necessary skills, knowledge, and capabilities to participate effectively in the economy and lead fulfilling lives. Access to quality education and healthcare enables individuals to enhance their productivity, contribute to economic growth, and enjoy improved living standards. Institutional development is another crucial aspect of economic development. It involves strengthening governance structures, enhancing the rule of law, and promoting transparency and accountability. Effective institutions and a sound legal framework are vital for creating an enabling environment for business activities, attracting investments, and fostering economic stability. Additionally, robust institutions help ensure equitable distribution of resources, protect property rights, and reduce corruption, thus fostering trust and confidence in the economy. Economic development strategies often involve a combination of policies, including investment in infrastructure, promotion of entrepreneurship, trade facilitation, technology adoption, and sustainable resource management. These policies aim to enhance productivity, diversify the economy, stimulate innovation, and create employment opportunities. International cooperation and support play a significant role in fostering economic development, especially for developing countries. Foreign direct investment, official development assistance, and access to markets can provide valuable resources, knowledge transfer, and market opportunities, helping countries overcome development challenges and accelerate progress. Measuring economic development requires a holistic approach that goes beyond GDP growth. While GDP remains an important indicator, other metrics such as the Human Development Index, HDI, which incorporates factors like life expectancy, education, and income, provide a more comprehensive assessment of human well-being and progress. Sustainable and inclusive economic development requires long-term planning, continuous monitoring, and adaptive policies that respond to evolving challenges and opportunities. Governments, international organizations, civil society, and private sector stakeholders collaborate to design and implement development strategies that ensure balanced growth, reduce poverty, and promote social inclusion. Developing economy, understanding countries with limited industrialization and lower standards of living compared to developed economies. A developing economy refers to a country that exhibits a relatively low level of industrialization and generally has a lower standard of living compared to developed economies. These countries often face various challenges in terms of economic growth, infrastructure development, and social well-being. 
Industrialization is a key characteristic used to distinguish developing economies from developed ones. Developing economies typically have a smaller share of industrial activities in their overall GDP compared to more developed nations. Instead, they may rely heavily on agriculture, extractive industries, and basic manufacturing. The limited industrial base can be attributed to factors such as inadequate infrastructure, technological gaps, and a lack of skilled labor. Standard of living is another important dimension when assessing the development status of an economy. Developing economies generally have lower average incomes, limited access to quality healthcare, education, and social services, and higher rates of poverty compared to their developed counterparts. These disparities are often influenced by factors like income inequality, limited job opportunities, inadequate social safety nets, and challenges in human capital development. It is important to note that the term developing economy is a broad classification and encompasses a wide range of countries at different stages of development. The United Nations and other organizations often use various indicators, such as GDP per capita, Human Development Index, HDI, or the World Bank's income classifications, to categorize economies as developing. However, these classifications are not without criticism as they may oversimplify the complexities and diversity within developing economies. Developing economies face unique challenges and opportunities as they strive for economic advancement. These challenges can include limited access to capital, technology, and markets, as well as inadequate infrastructure, institutional weaknesses, and political instability. However, developing economies also possess potential for growth, driven by factors such as natural resources, demographic advantages, untapped markets, and opportunities for innovation and entrepreneurship. To address these challenges and promote development, governments and international organizations often focus on implementing policies and initiatives that foster economic diversification, improve infrastructure, enhance education and healthcare systems, and promote inclusive growth. Additionally, international cooperation, foreign direct investment, and knowledge transfer can play a significant role in supporting the development efforts of these economies. It is worth emphasizing that the term developing economy should be approached with caution, as it does not capture the full complexity and dynamics of these nations. Economic development is a continuous and multidimensional process, and progress can vary widely among countries classified as developing. The goal is to support these economies in their journey towards sustainable growth, improved standards of living, and social progress. Developed economy, understanding countries with advanced industrialization and higher standards of living compared to developing economies. A developed economy refers to a country that has achieved a high level of industrialization and typically exhibits a higher standard of living compared to developing economies. These countries have undergone significant economic growth, technological advancements, and social progress, leading to improved quality of life for their citizens. Industrialization plays a central role in distinguishing developed economies from developing ones. Developed economies have a well-established and diverse industrial base, encompassing advanced manufacturing, services, technology, and knowledge-intensive sectors. They have made substantial progress in transitioning from agrarian or basic manufacturing economies to those characterized by sophisticated production processes, innovation, and value-added services. The higher standard of living observed in developed economies is a result of several factors. These countries generally have higher average incomes, better access to quality healthcare, education, and social services, and lower rates of poverty. The increased wealth and prosperity can be attributed to factors such as higher productivity levels, advanced technology adoption, robust infrastructure, and well-developed social safety nets. It is important to note that the term developed economy represents a broad classification and includes countries at different levels of development and income. International organizations like the United Nations, World Bank, and IMF often use indicators such as GDP per capita, Human Development Index, HDI, or income classifications to categorize economies as developed. However, these classifications are not without criticism, as they may overlook certain nuances and variations within developed economies. 
Developed economies continue to face their own set of challenges, despite their advanced status. These challenges include maintaining sustainable economic growth, managing income inequality, addressing environmental concerns, adapting to technological advancements, and ensuring social inclusivity. Governments and policymakers in developed economies continually strive to address these challenges through effective governance, innovation, investments in education and research, and social welfare programs. Developed economies also play a crucial role in the global economy, often serving as drivers of innovation, trade, and investment. They provide market opportunities, attract foreign direct investment, and serve as important trading partners for developing economies. Moreover, developed economies often contribute to global development efforts by providing development assistance, promoting knowledge sharing, and supporting capacity building in developing countries. While the term developed economy is commonly used, it is essential to recognize that development is an ongoing process. Economic, social, and technological changes continually shape the landscape of developed economies, and they must adapt and innovate to remain competitive and meet the evolving needs and aspirations of their citizens. Balance of payments, tracking economic transactions between a country and the rest of the world. The balance of payments refers to a comprehensive record of all economic transactions that take place between the residents of a country and the rest of the world over a specific period, typically a year. It serves as an essential tool for analyzing a country's international financial position and its economic relationship with other nations. The balance of payments account includes various categories of transactions, capturing both current account and capital account activities. The current account records transactions related to trade in goods and services, income flows such as wages and investments, and transfers like foreign aid and remittances. It provides insights into a country's trade balance, net income from abroad, and net transfers. The capital account, on the other hand, focuses on capital flows and includes transactions related to financial investments, loans, and changes in ownership of assets. This account provides information about foreign direct investment, FDI, portfolio investments, loans, and other capital flows that impact a country's external financial position. The balance of payments account is based on the principle of double-entry bookkeeping, where each transaction is recorded as a credit or a debit. When a country exports goods, provides services, or receives income from abroad, it is recorded as a credit in the balance of payments. Conversely, when a country imports goods, receives services, or makes payments to foreigners, it is recorded as a debit. The balance of payments account aims to maintain a balance between credits and debits. When total credits exceed total debits, it results in a surplus in the balance of payments, indicating that a country is a net lender to the rest of the world. Conversely, when total debits exceed total credits, it leads to a deficit, indicating that a country is a net borrower. The balance of payments is an important indicator of a country's economic health and its external economic relationships. A surplus in the balance of payments can reflect competitiveness in international trade, an inflow of foreign investment, or strong demand for a country's currency. On the other hand, a deficit can indicate a trade imbalance, a reliance on borrowing, or a need for foreign capital inflows to finance domestic investment. Policymakers, economists, and analysts closely monitor the balance of payments to assess the sustainability of a country's external position, its ability to meet foreign obligations, and the overall health of its economy. A persistent deficit or surplus may require adjustments in economic policies, exchange rate management, trade strategies, or capital flow management to maintain stability and promote sustainable economic growth. Overall, the balance of payments provides a comprehensive snapshot of a country's economic transactions with the rest of the world, helping to monitor economic performance, identify vulnerabilities, and inform policy decisions related to trade, investment, and macroeconomic management. Gross domestic product, GDP quantifying the total value of goods and services produced within a country's borders. Gross domestic product, GDP, serves as a crucial economic indicator that quantifies the total value of all goods and services produced within a country's borders during a specific period, typically a year. 
it provides valuable insights into the overall size and growth of an economy. GDP encompasses a wide range of economic activities, including the production of tangible goods like cars, machinery, and clothing, as well as intangible services such as healthcare, education, transportation, and banking. By measuring the monetary value of these goods and services, GDP provides a standardized metric to assess and compare the economic performance of different countries. There are three primary approaches to calculating GDP, the production approach, the income approach, and the expenditure approach. The production approach focuses on measuring the value of goods and services produced in various sectors of the economy. The income approach examines the total income generated by individuals and businesses involved in production. The expenditure approach tracks the total spending on goods and services by households, businesses, government entities, and net exports, exports minus imports. GDP serves multiple purposes in economic analysis and policymaking. It provides a measure of economic growth and helps gauge the overall health and performance of an economy. Increases in GDP over time indicate economic expansion and higher levels of economic activity, while decreases suggest economic contraction or recession. GDP is also used to compare the relative economic sizes of different countries or regions. It allows for international comparisons of economic performance, standard of living, and productivity levels. However, it's important to note that GDP alone may not capture the full picture of a country's well-being or quality of life, as it does not account for factors such as income distribution, environmental sustainability, or non-market activities. To address these limitations, alternative measures such as the Human Development Index, HDI, and the Genuine Progress Indicator, GPI, have been developed to provide a more comprehensive assessment of human well-being and sustainable development. Policymakers, economists, and analysts use GDP as a tool to guide economic policy decisions. It helps policymakers monitor economic trends, identify areas of strength or weakness, and develop strategies to promote economic stability, employment growth, and sustainable development. However, it's important to consider that GDP is not a perfect measure and has its limitations. It may not fully capture the informal or underground economy, the value of unpaid work, or the social and environmental costs associated with economic activities. Therefore, complementing GDP with other indicators and adopting a broader perspective is essential for a comprehensive understanding of an economy's overall performance and its impact on society and the environment. GNP, Gross National Product Evaluating the Total Value of Goods and Services Produced by a Country's Residents, Domestically and Abroad. GNP, or Gross National Product, serves as an economic indicator that measures the total value of goods and services produced by a country's residents, both domestically and abroad, during a specific period. It provides insights into the economic performance and output of a country's citizens, regardless of their geographic location. Understanding GNP requires considering the distinction between residents and geographic boundaries. GNP takes into account not only the production that occurs within a country's borders, as measured by GDP, but also includes the economic activities of a country's residents that take place outside its borders. This means that if a country's citizens are engaged in economic activities in foreign countries, their contributions to the production process are incorporated into the GNP calculation. The calculation of GNP involves summing up the monetary value of all goods and services produced by a country's residents, regardless of where the production occurs. This includes activities such as manufacturing, services, investments, and income generated from foreign sources. GNP provides a broader perspective on a country's economic performance by capturing the contributions of its residents both domestically and internationally. GNP is particularly useful for countries with significant international economic engagements, such as multinational corporations, overseas investments, or citizens working abroad. It allows for a more comprehensive assessment of a country's economic power and its citizens' economic contributions on a global scale. However, it's important to note that GNP has become less commonly used in favor of GDP, which focuses solely on the economic activities occurring within a country's borders. 
GDP provides a more straightforward measure of economic activity and is typically the primary indicator used for comparing the economic performance of different countries. While GNP provides insights into the economic contributions of a country's residents, it also has its limitations. Like GDP, it does not fully capture non-market activities, income distribution, or social and environmental costs. Additionally, GNP can be influenced by factors such as exchange rates, international investments, and global economic conditions, which can introduce volatility and make it more challenging to interpret changes in GNP over time. Overall, GNP offers a perspective on a country's economic performance that incorporates the activities of its residents both at home and abroad. While it has been largely supplanted by GDP in economic analysis and policymaking, it remains a relevant concept for understanding the global economic connections and contributions of a country's citizens. Employment, understanding the state of engagement in paid work or self-employment. Employment refers to the state of being engaged in paid work or self-employment, where individuals dedicate their time, skills, and efforts in exchange for compensation. It is a crucial aspect of the economy and plays a significant role in the well-being of individuals and societies. Paid work encompasses various forms of employment, including full-time or part-time jobs, contractual or temporary positions, and formal or informal arrangements. Individuals who are employed receive monetary compensation, such as salaries, wages, or commissions, for their services or contributions to economic activities. Self-employment, on the other hand, refers to individuals who work for themselves and are not employed by another person or organization. Self-employed individuals are responsible for managing their own businesses or providing services directly to clients or customers. They assume the risks and rewards associated with their ventures and often have greater autonomy and control over their work. Employment is a fundamental pillar of economic development and social stability. It provides individuals with a source of income, financial security, and the ability to meet their basic needs, support their families, and participate in economic activities. Additionally, employment contributes to economic growth by driving consumption, innovation, and productivity. Monitoring employment levels and trends is essential for policymakers, economists, and analysts. It helps assess the health of an economy, measure labor market conditions, and identify changes in employment patterns over time. Employment data provides insights into workforce dynamics, such as unemployment rates, labor force participation, job creation, and sectoral shifts, which inform economic policies, workforce planning, and social interventions. However, it's important to note that employment alone does not necessarily guarantee decent work conditions, job security, or equal opportunities. Issues such as underemployment, informal employment, income inequality, discrimination, and unsafe working conditions can persist despite individuals being engaged in paid work. Policies that promote fair labor practices, social protection, skill development, and inclusive growth are crucial for fostering quality employment opportunities and ensuring decent work for all. Moreover, societal and technological changes have led to evolving dynamics in the labor market. Technological advancements, automation, and the gig economy have transformed traditional employment models and introduced new forms of work. Policymakers and societies must adapt to these changes by providing support, retraining programs, and social safety nets to address challenges and ensure the resilience and well-being of workers in a rapidly changing labor landscape. In summary, employment encompasses the state of engaging in paid work or self-employment, providing individuals with income, economic security, and opportunities for personal and professional growth. It is a vital component of economic development and social well-being, requiring attention to ensure decent work conditions, equal opportunities, and adaptability in the face of evolving labor market dynamics. Unemployment, understanding the state of being willing and able to work but unable to find suitable employment. Unemployment refers to the state of being willing and able to work but unable to find suitable employment opportunities. It represents a significant challenge within an economy, affecting individuals, communities, and the overall socioeconomic well-being of a nation. 
When individuals are unemployed, it means they are actively seeking employment, available to work, and willing to participate in the labor force. However, despite their efforts, they are unable to secure suitable jobs that match their skills, qualifications, or preferences. Unemployment can arise due to various factors, including economic downturns, technological changes, mismatched skills, structural shifts in industries, or inadequate job creation. Unemployment is a complex issue that has profound social and economic consequences. It leads to a loss of income and financial instability for individuals and their families, reducing their ability to meet basic needs, afford healthcare, education, and housing, and contribute to economic growth through consumption. Unemployment can also negatively impact mental health, self-esteem, and overall well-being, creating social challenges and inequalities. For the economy as a whole, high levels of unemployment hinder productivity, limit consumer spending, and can contribute to social unrest. It represents an underutilization of human resources and potential, as individuals who are unemployed are not actively contributing to the production and output of goods and services. Unemployment is commonly measured through the unemployment rate, which represents the percentage of the labor force that is unemployed. The labor force includes individuals who are employed or actively seeking employment. Economists and policymakers closely monitor the unemployment rate to assess the health of the labor market, identify trends, and design appropriate interventions. Addressing unemployment requires a comprehensive approach that encompasses economic policies, education and skill development, labor market reforms, and social safety nets. Governments and organizations often implement strategies to stimulate job creation, foster entrepreneurship, provide training programs, and enhance the employability of individuals. Active labor market policies, such as job placement services, career counseling, and vocational training, can help match job seekers with suitable employment opportunities. It's important to note that unemployment can have different forms and classifications. These include long-term unemployment, youth unemployment, and structural unemployment, which may require targeted policies and interventions tailored to specific groups or labor market challenges. Efforts to reduce unemployment are crucial for promoting inclusive growth, reducing inequality, and ensuring social and economic stability. By addressing the root causes of unemployment and fostering an environment that supports job creation and decent work opportunities, societies can strive towards full employment, economic prosperity, and enhanced well-being for all. Inflation, understanding the sustained increase in the general price level of goods and services over time. Inflation refers to a sustained increase in the general price level of goods and services within an economy over a specific period. It signifies a decrease in the purchasing power of money, as more units of currency are required to buy the same amount of goods or services. Inflation is typically measured using price indices, such as the Consumer Price Index, CPI, or the Producer Price Index, PPI. These indices track the average price changes of a basket of goods and services commonly consumed by households or produced by businesses. Inflation can arise from various factors. Demand pull inflation occurs when aggregate demand exceeds the available supply of goods and services, leading to upward pressure on prices. Cost push inflation occurs when there is an increase in production costs, such as wages, raw materials, or energy prices, causing businesses to raise prices to maintain their profit margins. Inflation impacts individuals, businesses, and the overall economy in several ways. As the general price level rises, the purchasing power of money decreases. This means that individuals need to spend more to maintain the same standard of living. It erodes the value of savings, reduces the real income of individuals, and can create uncertainty and distortions in financial planning. For businesses, inflation affects costs, profitability, and investment decisions. Rising input costs can squeeze profit margins, making it more challenging for businesses to maintain competitiveness. Uncertainty regarding future prices can also discourage long-term investments and hinder economic growth. Moderate inflation can have some positive effects. 
It can provide incentives for spending and investment, as individuals and businesses aim to avoid the erosion of purchasing power. It also allows for nominal wage increases, which can improve labor market dynamics and support economic growth. However, high or unpredictable inflation can be detrimental to an economy. It can lead to a loss of confidence in the currency, hinder long-term planning, distort price signals, and exacerbate income inequality. It can also create challenges for central banks and policymakers in managing monetary policy and maintaining price stability. Central banks play a crucial role in managing inflation through monetary policy tools. They set interest rates, control the money supply, and implement other measures to influence borrowing costs, spending, and investment levels. The primary objective is to maintain price stability keeping inflation within a target range conducive to sustainable economic growth. Policymakers closely monitor inflation indicators and economic data to assess the state of the economy and make informed decisions. They employ a range of measures, such as fiscal policies, exchange rate management, and supply-side reforms, to address inflationary pressures, promote price stability, and support overall economic performance. In summary, inflation represents the sustained increase in the general price level of goods and services over time. It impacts individuals, businesses, and the economy as a whole, affecting purchasing power, investment decisions, and economic stability. Balancing inflationary pressures while fostering sustainable economic growth requires vigilant monitoring, effective policies, and coordination among stakeholders. Deflation understanding the sustained decrease in the general price level of goods and services over time. Deflation refers to a sustained decrease in the general price level of goods and services within an economy over a specific period. It represents the opposite of inflation, where the purchasing power of money increases as fewer units of currency are required to purchase the same amount of goods or services. Similar to inflation, Deflation is typically measured using price indices such as the Consumer Price Index, CPI, or the Producer Price Index, PPI. These indices track the average price changes of a basket of goods and services commonly consumed by households or produced by businesses. Deflation can arise due to several factors. Demand-side deflation occurs when there is a decrease in aggregate demand for goods and services, leading to downward pressure on prices. It may result from factors such as reduced consumer spending, declining investments, or tightening credit conditions. Supply-side deflation, on the other hand, occurs when there is a significant increase in the supply of goods and services, outpacing demand and causing prices to fall. Deflation has significant implications for individuals, businesses, and the overall economy. While falling prices may appear beneficial to consumers in the short term as they can purchase more with their money, prolonged deflation can have negative consequences. One of the primary concerns with deflation is the impact on consumer behavior. Anticipating further price declines, consumers may delay purchases, leading to decreased spending and reduced economic activity. This phenomenon, known as the deflationary spiral, can result in a contraction of the economy, lower employment levels, and a decline in business profitability. For businesses, deflation poses challenges as falling prices can squeeze profit margins and reduce revenue. It can create an environment of decreased investment, hinder economic growth, and lead to financial instability. Businesses may delay investment decisions, reduce production, or cut costs, further exacerbating the deflationary pressures. Deflation can also complicate monetary policy and pose challenges for central banks. Traditional monetary policy tools, such as lowering interest rates, may become less effective in stimulating borrowing and spending when deflationary expectations are firmly entrenched. Central banks may need to employ unconventional measures to combat deflationary pressures, such as quantitative easing or direct intervention in financial markets. While deflation may have some positive aspects, such as increasing the purchasing power of consumers, prolonged and severe deflation can be harmful to an economy. It can lead to a vicious cycle of reduced spending, decreased investment, and economic stagnation. Central banks and policymakers often aim to maintain price stability, avoiding both excessive inflation and deflation, 
to foster sustainable economic growth. In summary, deflation represents a sustained decrease in the general price level of goods and services over time. It can have adverse effects on consumption, investment, employment, and overall economic activity. Managing deflationary pressures requires careful consideration of monetary policy, fiscal measures, and structural reforms to support price stability and sustainable economic development. Savings, setting aside a portion of income for future use. Savings refer to the portion of income that individuals or households choose not to consume and instead set aside for future purposes. It represents a form of deferred consumption, where funds are reserved for future needs, goals, or investments. When individuals receive income from various sources such as wages, salaries, or business profits, they have the option to allocate a portion of their income towards savings rather than spending it immediately. Savings can take various forms, including depositing money into savings accounts, purchasing financial instruments like bonds or stocks, or investing in assets such as real estate or retirement funds. There are multiple reasons why individuals choose to save. One primary motivation is to build a financial cushion or emergency fund to cover unexpected expenses or income disruptions. This provides a sense of security and helps individuals navigate unforeseen circumstances without relying on credit or incurring debt. Savings also play a crucial role in achieving financial goals and aspirations. Individuals may save for specific purposes such as education, homeownership, starting a business, or retirement. By setting aside money over time, individuals can accumulate the necessary funds to realize their long-term objectives. Furthermore, savings contribute to personal and economic stability. Higher savings rates within a society indicate a greater capacity for investment, which can fuel economic growth. Savings provide a pool of capital that financial institutions can lend to individuals and businesses, facilitating investment and entrepreneurial activities. From a macroeconomic perspective, savings also influence aggregate demand. When individuals save a significant portion of their income, it reduces immediate consumption. This can lead to lower overall spending and potentially impact economic growth, which is why governments often implement policies to encourage consumer spending and investment. Governments and financial institutions play a role in promoting savings through various means. Governments may offer tax incentives or retirement savings plans to encourage individuals to save for retirement. Financial institutions provide savings accounts, certificates of deposit, CDS, and other savings products that offer interest or investment returns, incentivizing individuals to save their money.